Hello, my name is Kate Brown. I'm a consultant hand and peripheral nerve injury surgeon and I work at the Royal Derby Hospital and Queen's Medical Centre. It's a glorious winter morning in the lovely Derbyshire countryside where I live. This is the uh, village of Ashover, which is my nearby village. Nestled in the valley with the river Amber sweeping alongside it. Here you can see the fabric, which is a Britstone observation point. And next to it, there is what used to be the Royal Observer Corps monitoring station. One of the glorious things of living around here is there are just a whole ton of footpaths running all over the hills and the valleys and I love my running so it means I've got lots of places to go um, exploring and it's a little bit like that with nerve surgery. Uh, you always have to go in kind of expecting the unexpected and each time you go in there'll be a new pathway or a new bridge or something that will surprise you. It's not in the textbooks, it's uh, not something you've come across before and uh, that's what makes it so interesting. The main reason though that uh, I want to do this today is because as we talked about on our webinar on Wednesday, managing nerve patients is an active process and so I thought what I'm going to do is we're going to meet again at the bottom of the hill on that other side and as I'm running up to the top of that hill we're going to talk about all those principles because it is an active process and something that requires a lot of hard work. Okay, we're now at the bottom of the hill and as agreed, I'm going to talk about the principles of managing these patients because it is an active process, so it's only fair I'm doing something active while we do that. So off we go. Um, most of the time we'll meet these patients either in the emergency department or in our practice clinics. And I guess the first thing is, this is, and. A, a case of owning your patient. So when you see them, you need to take, take responsibility for them and you're the one who's going to be managing them through until either it's you sorting them out at the end or sending them to someone who does know. The first thing is we need to make sure we're taking a proper history and examination. So we need to find out exactly when their symptoms first started and especially in those acute for example, a shoulder dislocation, can we ascertain whether the neurology was present before or after there was a reduction of the, of the joint? We need to be examining them properly. You've gone through all through the MTSP stuff with Tom, not going to go over that again. So, but just a repetition of making sure that you've documented all of your findings. I'm now going through a big nice puzzle that's brilliant um, you've documented all your findings and clearly noted where the tunnels is one of the biggest problems when managing these patients is people will let you know about tunnels but they won't say where it is so the problem is when you come back to examine them a few weeks later you don't know whether it's an advancing tunnels or a static tunnels so write down get a tape measure out measure where it is write it down the next thing is, you then have to decide when this patient's going to come back. So if you're going to review them in four weeks, make sure you're booking them into a clinic appointment, a clinic when you're there to review them. Because you were the one who examined them before, and so you'll know what your findings were. And if you're rotating on for those trainees to a different post, make sure you hand it over to somebody else, and they take ownership of seeing that patient when they come back. Consider whether or not you need to be getting some nerve conduction studies. I know we talk about the six week point, but this is pragmatically in a lot of hospitals where it's going to be difficult to get a hold of those. So it might be worth ordering them that first time you see them. Remember that even by two weeks, there will already be evidence in the EMGs of fibrillations. So you'll already have evidence if there's a degenerative lesion. You also need to think about therapy. The worst thing is for a patient to end up getting fixed contractures because then it's going to be very difficult no matter what you manage to get back with either a conservative or a surgical approach to these injuries. So 
Do they need to be splintered? Do they need to have passive therapy going on? And again, we need ownership of that. It's not good enough just to write a, a form and send it off. We need to check that the person who's going to be doing the required therapy knows what the problem is, knows what the end game is. So we then need to make sure that when they come back, we see them. And if things aren't progressing, then we need to seek help early. So if it's not going to be you that's managing this all the way through, do you, need to, do you know someone who can? And make sure that you've either got their number on speed dial or you make the appropriate conversation. You know there are plenty of us around. You met someone on Wednesday. There's plenty more out there. And finally, you need to be counselling your patients. This is almost certainly going to be a long process. They need to be prepared for that. Give them some timelines. We talk about a nerve regenerating at a minimum each day. We need to talk about the fact that also there'll be a certain period of time when the nerve is almost in shock. And as a result of which, that would be a time lag. We also know that older patients don't do as well as younger patients. <coughs> and especially as there are a lot of confounding comorbidities. Right, I'll see you at the top of the hill. And we're now up on the other side of the hill so we can see the fabric over in the distance that I showed you at the very beginning. And that's just to emphasise the point that there is a chronology to these uh, pathologies and it's up to you to take ownership of them. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. And uh, also goodbye from my favourite Nell. My favourite running partner. <laughs>